I recently got the opportunity to actually go and stay at my own Airbnb that used to be my primary residence. And in staying there, I sort of realized that a lot of the things in that property had just gotten worn over time because that property was a medium term rental and medium term rentals tend to just, mm, I don't know, wear on the property a bit, wear on the different aspects, the furniture, the decor, the sheets and everything like that. And so because this Airbnb used to be my primary residence, we actually try and go and we enjoy the property ourselves as much as we can with the kids. And so, I don't know, I was just really unsatisfied with the state of it. And it sort of made me realize that all too often Airbnb hosts will just hit autopilot, you know, because if it works, it works, right? If the Airbnb is working, why spend money on it if you're already making money on it no one really complains about it but I personally am starting to believe more and more that that's the wrong philosophy to believe in whenever you're running a successful short-term rental I think as Airbnb hosts we should be looking for ways to always up our game and make the property as good as possible so today I wanted to talk about six ways that I spruced up my Airbnb for less than $1,000 now not all of it is cosmetic some of it are just more functional things that just improve the guest experience but I just really think that especially in a medium-term rental where people are staying at my place for 30 days at a time it's just very easy to get annoyed by little things that you know a typical short-term rental host may not include in, the, in their property so for me staying there there were a few things that just frustrated me that I was like all right let's just fix this because if I'm getting annoyed by it and it's my own house I can't even imagine what a guest would be feeling if they're staying at my house for 30 60 or 90 days at a time and this isn't really something that I do for medium-term rentals only I mean this is something I do for short-term rentals as well but it just so happened that I was staying at this property that serves longer-term guests so let's get into number one here the first thing that I change in my property was my bed frame. A couple years ago, there was this bed frame that I really wanted from CB2 and I was really broke and it was like eight or 900 bucks. And I was like, well, you know what? What if I built my own bed frame? So I did. And it actually looked really nice here. I'll show photos of it. I mean, I thought it looked nice at the time for, for the stage of life that I was in. It cost me like a hundred bucks and I was super happy with it. But over time, that bed got squeakier and squeakier and squeakier. And because it's a two bedroom house, our toddler, he's like 14, 15 months right now, he stays in that room with us. So whenever we get into bed, it squeaks and it wakes them up. This is obviously not something that's gonna happen to everybody, but the squeakiness is, you know, you know, if you're doing, if you're, if you're staying in that bed with your spouse or significant other, or you're a, a toss and turner, or you're just getting into bed, it squeaks all the time and that drove us crazy crazy, not just because it would wake up my son, but it's just very annoying. So I decided to just give it away and buy a new bed frame. Didn't need to do it. It was perfectly functional, but I just knew, again, I'm a very heavy sleeper. And so for anyone that's just a, a slightly light sleeper or a light sleeper, it'd be so frustrated staying in that bed. So first thing I did was try to revamp the sleeping experience by swapping it out for a nice, easy Zynus frame bed. It was like 111 bucks. So I already had a headboard. So I just swapped the bed frame. It's a platform bed frame by Zynus. And by the way, I'll leave all these links down in the description below. Number two way that I optimize my own short-term rental slash medium-term rental is a trash can. I put one in there. Previously, people just had to fend for themselves. No, I'm just kidding. I had a trash can in there and there are a lot of, I mean, it was an expensive stainless steel trash can that I got like five years ago, all right? Just hear me out on this because y'all are probably like, come on, really? This is boring. It's not. If you have a nice stainless steel trash can and it works and it opens and you can throw your trash away in it, probably in your mind, there's absolutely no reason at all whatsoever to replace it. However, there's a couple reasons that I decided to replace mine and this comes down to guest experience more than aesthetic. A, the trash can on the inside, oh God. I don't even wanna describe what it looked like on the inside, but I can assure you, it did not look like the trash can that a freaking human being uses. <laughs> it was really gross, gunked up, crusted over, juices everywhere, just not a a good site, all right? So if a guest was changing out their trash bag and they saw the inside of it, I think it would just be a very unsightly thing for them and they'd be like, yeah, you know, this is gross. They, they obviously didn't pay attention to the cleaning. That's, that's reason number one. Reason number two is that it's an electric trash can and the actual opening compartment on it didn't work super well. Even when you change all the batteries, they would work for like two weeks and then it would only open half the time and then you'd have to like use your finger to really pry it open. And it was fine. It's not like, it's like first world problems, but still that paired with how nasty it was, I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna spend 70 bucks on a new trash can. 60 bucks. <laughs> I just spent 60 bucks on a trash can. So that's an easy one. Change that out. And I just felt so much better about that decision because I just felt like the house was cleaner. Whenever I talk to people looking to get started in real estate, I always recommend setting aside some cash reserves in case something doesn't go according to plan with their property or in case we go into, you know, like a global recession. So if you're gonna keep a lot of cash handy, then you might as well let it work hard for you and make you more money. Which is why I really love Wealthfront's cash account that comes in at a whopping 3.3% APY at the recording of this video, which is pretty crazy. 
Yeah, uh-huh, that's right. 15 times the national average. So let's just break down the numbers here really fast. If you have $25,000 in your real estate cash reserves, that would earn you roughly, uh, give me the one, uh, $825 a year, which if you really think about it, can be like one to two months of your Airbnb's utility bills, or better yet, 80 Chipotle burritos. And that is just, mm, that's, that's, that's money magic right there, peeps. Also, there are no account fees, there are no overdraft fees, and they just doubled their FDIC insurance, now up to $2 million through partner banks. So if you want your money to earn you more money, then I highly recommend Wealthfront. To sign up, be sure to click the link down in the description below or go to wealthfront.com slash robbill. Okay, now back to the video. Number three, this probably not gonna come at a, at a surprise to a lot of you that watch the channel, but fake plants. Uh, my favorite place for getting fake plants is World Market. I spent 120 bucks on a snake plant and on some other pointy, <laughs> I don't know, I always call them pointy bastards on the channel. Do a montage of that. Pointy bastard, pointy bastard, ask me where it's at, I could probably find it for you. This was something that I didn't need. Uh, if you actually looked at the photos, we had fig trees in there, like real fig trees. And unfortunately, my medium term guests killed them. <laughs> they're dead. Rest in peace to my figgy, figgy, figgies. But we didn't need to put anything in there because, I, you know, in my mind, I think you take photos whenever your Airbnb looks the best. If your Airbnb is a little bit different upon arrival, just a little bit, right? Like if I didn't have that fig tree in there, it wouldn't be a big deal. A guest would probably never notice. But because people are staying there for a longer amount of time, and even as a short-term rental, you really want your place to feel homey, and there's just a certain feeling that plants add to the vibe of your place, right? So I spent 120 bucks, I think 60 and 60. Uh, I think it might have been a little bit more because I bought a planter base for it too, but it was totally worth it because as soon as we placed those in the home, I just genuinely felt like, okay, I felt like I was at home again. And that's what plants do. I will always say invest in plants. Just so you know, I've been known to spend about 500 to $1,000 on fake plants for any Airbnb that I set up, but because this was already set up and there were fake plants in there, all I needed to do was add a couple to replace some dead ones. Number four, this is probably the biggest expense that I've made on my Airbnb. And I'll say it kind of hurt. And again, it was one of those things that were not completely necessary, but sheets. Um, I bought microfiber sheets for my place and they just don't hold up, I think, to longer stays. But in general, they're just not as comfortable as 100% cotton sheets. My favorite 100% cotton sheets are the Threshold Performance brand at Target. I'll link that down below too. I got some with designs on it. Doesn't make it more expensive, but they hide stains a little bit, like small stains a little bit. They're not gonna, you know, not gonna hide, you know, dead body blood stains or anything like that. But for little things like a small little coffee stain or whatever, it's very easy to wash. And they withstand bleach a lot more than typical microfiber sheets. The reason I spent the most amount of money here is I bought three pairs of sheets per bed and I had three beds total that I was trying to get sheets for. And I genuinely believe now more than anything, the biggest investment that you should be making outside of statement pieces for your Airbnb is an actual comfortable rest. And for me, I'm just such a little baby about how I sleep and my sleep routine. It's gotta be just right. And I slept in my own bed and I was like, these sheets suck. So I coughed up the 450 bucks to have an awesome night's rest and immediately I was happier the next day because of it. And so for me, I'm like, okay, if I can impact someone's sleep in a really positive way, they will probably look more positively towards my Airbnb. Number five, there's gonna be some, some trends here, uh, but number five is pillows. I usually get memory foam pillows from Costco and those are fine for short-term rentals. For medium-term rentals, I, I don't mean to make this a medium-term rental video, it's really not, but I just really discovered the importance of sleep. I'm just like, I invest so much money in my own sleep and I skimp out for guests. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna buy all new pillows for my place. So I spent about 50 bucks for four really nice down alternative pillows from Costco. I'll try to link those. Those are a little bit tougher to find, but man, they were a game changer for me. I was able to sleep like significantly better. So again, there's a common trend here, new sheets, new bed frame, new pillow, but it was totally worth it. But now I know that guests that stay at my place will always come back to me and especially notate in the reviews that the sleeping situation was awesome because I have really nice memory foam mattresses in there and people usually rave about those. But I've, what I've noticed over the years is that people always rave about my mattress says, but they don't rave about anything else. So I'm like, all right, if I provide good sheets, good bed, good pillows, I mean, that's, that's, that's the trifecta, Caleb. Come on, man, spend the money on bedding, bro. Get those Brooklyn and sheets. By the way, I really love Brooklyn and sheets. Those are my favorite, literally my favorite things that I've ever bought in my life. Not relevant to this video, but if you're like, man, I really want to just change the way I sleep. This is not an ad, by the way. Brooklyn and it's totally worth it. What do you, oh yeah, we got 1%. All right, uh, I'll see you on the next tip. Oh. And we're back in the studio, thanks to movie magic. The greatest thing ever. Okay, so uh, 
Caleb, what tip are we on before you so really interrupted me on the Rob Bilt channel? Oh, this is the last one. We did it. Last tip of the day. Listen, most of the time I would cut this out and just go straight to the juice. The juice! But you know what? We keep it real on the Rob Bilt channel. Oh, that's right. Final thing that I spent money on, and then I'm going to give you a little bonus, daddy. Last tip here was a vacuum. I spent $150 on a shark vacuum. Man, you know, I used to have Dyson. I've had so many Dysons in my life, and I got to say, I they're fine. Hot take. Dysons are fine, but sharks are like seriously the greatest vacuums ever. I have the cordless one here in my personal home. Decided I don't want to spend an extra hundred bucks on that, which is like 250. I spent 150 on a corded shark. And honestly, I think I like it more than my cordless shark because the battery doesn't die. It's more powerful. I mean, it's a little obviously annoying to plug it in and stuff like that, but it actually wasn't that big of a deal. You know, that was the, I'm not going to get into this. It's a first world problem because you're like, oh, I need the cordless. Like I want to go to my couch, to my bedroom without having to plug it in and who cares guys it's an Airbnb you know what I mean but the reason that I spent this money is that well a my cleaners did an awful job they did so bad at vacuuming my property that I fired them but since I checked into it I tried to use my own vacuum and I was just like yeah it's fine but it's time for a new vacuum we hated that vacuum but the reason I bought a vacuum and the reason I feel that that's an important investment is that I really do believe in providing your guests with cleaning supplies because if you give them cleaning supplies you're both enabling them to clean more and empowering them to clean more and I can't tell you how many times I've been at an Airbnb where they had a really crappy broom and no vacuum or no broom and no vacuum. And so when you spill food everywhere or something happens, you have no way of actually cleaning it up or you have to wet a paper towel and then dab it on the dust so that you're able to clean it up. And that's so annoying. So I actually think that a vacuum is perhaps the number one most missed thing that Airbnb hosts don't put in, in their Airbnbs. And when they do put them in their Airbnbs, all y'all tend to buy the $50 really crappy ones and they just don't do a good job. Job. If you want your guests to be exceptionally clean, you got to give them the tools to do that. And I promise you, no one will ever be mad that you provided an amazing vacuum. All right. Final bonus tip here because we weren't quite at $1,000 and I just remembered that also I spent $30 on throw pillows at Costco. I just like to spruce it up. I, I tend to spend a lot of money on throw pillows. Remember how I said I spent $1,000 on fake plants? Usually spending about 500 to uh, up to 800 bucks sometimes on fake pillows because I just really think that throw pillows and fake plants spruce up a place and make it feel so homey. And then on top of all of that, after I spruced up everything, I actually had a professional photographer come out and reshoot my place. Just look at these photos. Aren't they great? They were all shot and edited by my good friend Eric Barkhurst over at Barkhurst Studios. I'll leave a link in the description down below. I genuinely believe that he is the best real estate photographer and photographer in all of Southern California. He covers everywhere down there. So if you guys need an amazing photographer, please hit him up. He's amazing and in all of the places that he's ever shot for me convert super well on Airbnb, making a ton of money. And that's it, everybody. Those are my lessons and my tips for sprucing up your Airbnb. Consider these investments, right? Like the investing never stops. As soon as your Airbnb is set up, just remember, Remember, you're never done. It's your job to optimize it and make it better throughout the years. Otherwise, you eventually end up having a rundown Airbnb that people will leave you three or four star reviews over and it's gonna hurt your ratings and then guess what? You won't have the bookings come in. All right, so make the investment and I promise it may not seem like it's gonna pay you out in dividends immediately, but over time, it's gonna provide your guests with an amazing experience. All right, so with that said, thank you so much to Wealthfront for sponsoring today's video and I'll catch you on the next episode of Raw Bill. All right, bye.